This is one of the things that I learned from Tom Gibbons, right? Bird shot is for birds, right? This is designed to either shoot targets. This is like a clay target seven and a half shot uh, federal stuff. So you guys voted and you want to see me respond to this video. Now you would think a two second Google search would make this a mute argument because you can literally go on Google images, type in person killed by bird shot, and you can clearly see cadavers where it looks like this was removed from their body. Like they took this chunk of meat and just pulled it out of their body and set it on the table. Most definitely lethal. Now I can't show those pictures on here because this video would definitely be flagged and taken down. But here's some x-ray photos. And what I'm getting from the cadaver photos is basically once the shot is grouping or patterning bigger than a softball, it loses effectiveness. So what you want to do is go to the range, try to get your pattern this tight, and it will most definitely be lethal. If it's getting outside the seas, it's going to be questionable. Well, what I have is obviously a catalog some paper that should be roughly as difficult to penetrate as a human skull and of course two gallons of water so it's a just a lightweight target load and to shoot it 12 inch cylinder bore from close range. Uh, complete penetration and soaking. Now I don't have a dog in the fight. Because of my property how my house is set up, I could literally mount an M2 in my hallway and use it for home defense. Even filled with Ralphus rounds, or Rufus rounds, or I can't remember exactly how it's pronounced, like just ch -ch -ch. chug, 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 chug. And the hardest part would be is trying to explain to my insurance company how exactly my car got totaled out, parked in the garage when I would normally be sleeping. But there is an application. I've lived in apartments where there is literally no safe direction to shoot. I cannot shoot up, I cannot shoot down, I cannot shoot east, west, north, south. It doesn't matter. No matter what, there's always people there. And that's when I had loaded up birdshot in my shotgun. Because birdshot at close range is basically a frangible slug. What's going to happen is as soon as it, it impacts the target, because each little BB holds a percentage of the kinetic energy alone, they're not effective enough to penetrate anything. Together they are, because they all work together and they just do mass devastation. Exactly, and I've heard people say that as long as the pellets are still in the wad, it's basically a slug. No. No, because I guarantee you we shoot a slug with that at that distance, it's gonna go kablooey. Well, the slug will, a, a typical foster slug will penetrate out to about the end of the block yeah. in, in chunks it'll disintegrate, turn and chunk. Now, Brennicky will go like sailing off, <laughs> yeah, off into the through mountain. the berm, through the mountain, yeah, off into Anthem. Yeah, we're for home defense. Yeah. So if you hit your target, the shot is probably gonna stay inside the target. You don't have to worry about it going through the person, through the wall, and killing the neighbor. If you miss the target and it hits the wall, as long as they're not like pressed up against the wall or really, really close to the wall, it'll start dispersing. Yeah, they'll probably still get hit, but it's not going to be enough to kill them. They're just going to get a bunch of welts, so you'll probably get the crap suit out of you. But at least you don't have a death on your conscience then of killing someone that you didn't intend to kill. So I, I understand the application or why somebody would want to use birdshot. And a couple of things they didn't discuss in the video was what kind of choke are they using? Because that makes a huge difference. That's everything when it comes to birdshot. A cylinder bore is going to perform way different than a full choke. Now what you would want to do if you plan on using birdshot is literally take a tape measure, measure the longest possible distance you can shoot in your house, go to the shooting range and see how it patterns. If it's not patterning desirably, then you'd go with a different choke and you'd tighten it up. If you absolutely can still not, if you absolutely still cannot get it to pattern the way you want, 
well, then you'd make wax slugs. What you're basically doing then is you're putting wax mixed in with the shot inside the wad so it doesn't allow it to expand until it hits a target. Now, they're trying to use this ballistic gel. This was actually a two-part video series. They didn't actually label it as a two-part video series. The first one was attacking Paul Harrell's meat target, trying to discredit it, trying to say that nothing that he does has any sort of tangible evidence or any sort of reality behind it. Hey everybody, today on Active Self-Protection Extra, I wanna to talk to you about ballistics gel and why I believe that shooting at groceries is a bad idea. Now they didn't actually label the second video as a second video, but that was the point of the first video because they knew they were gonna make the second video and then everybody would reference Paul Harold. But because they discredited his meat target in the first video, Nobody references it in the second video because they already have a video discrediting it and why his meat target is not credible. But it just doesn't do what we want it to do and we're gonna show that to you today, so. Well, unfortunately, bad guys are not made out of ballistic jelly. Your ballistic jelly test is farther from reality than Paul Harold's meat target. Yes, it gives you a consistent testing medium so you can measure results and see how stuff performs against each other but it does not at all, in any way, shape, or form, say how that projectile is gonna perform against the person. Three and a half inches of penetration get me skin, that at five yards, I've got an inch to two inch of penetration that's probably not getting through any of the muscle that uh, is on the outside of me, probably not getting through ribs and stuff for sure. Your, your organs in it, and so it's not a real human. Guys, this isn't designed to be a real human. It's designed to be a repeatable medium. It's designed to be uh, something that we can test to say, okay, wait a minute, uh, uh, round A, I get so much penetration, so much expansion, so many wound channels, and this is what that looks like. Round B, I get a different thing, and I have a very repeatable medium. You can get rough ideas. A great example would be right inside your video, you said about three, what was it? I wrote it down. Three and a half inches into this gel is just like breaking the skin. Now, okay, so this is bare gelatin, so that the general rule on this kind of clear ballistics gel is about three to three and a half inches of penetration is equivalent to penetrating skin. Now, I don't know exactly how they came up with this number. I'm assuming they shot at each other with pellet guns. And then as soon as somebody broke the skin, they're like, okay, so 10 pumps on my pellet gun shooting this size BB will break the skin. So now let's shoot it into the ballistic gel and measure how far it is. And that would be equivalent to breaking the skin. I spec is if you read it, is that when they fire, the calibration of ballistics gelatin fire a 177 steel BB at 590 feet per second into the gelatin with a total penetration between 2.95 and 3.74 inches. And this particular gel that, that we are shooting was 3.25 inches. Okay, cool. Well, that's flawed for a couple of different reasons. One, that's not how thick skin is. Skin is really, really thick. Now, it would be different if that ballistic gel was accurate and once a projectile is right here, it starts acting like it's already in, impacting the skin. Now, on standard projectiles, yeah, it might have some sort of relevance, but on the birdshot test, it has zero relevance. Paul Harold's meat target is far more accurate of a demonstration. Because as soon as the birdshot impacts something, it starts spreading. So if you're like, okay, it's got to go three inches in before it's considered breaking the skin, well, it's already had three inches to bleed off kinetic energy and spread out where it wouldn't work like that on a human because it wouldn't start spreading until the impact. And then you're gonna get this taken out of the body instead of assuming three and a half inches of penetration to get me skin, that at five yards, I've got an inch to two inch of penetration that's probably not getting through any of the muscle that uh, is on the outside of me, probably not getting through ribs and stuff for sure. You're, you're... This is taken out of the body, which even if three inches inside the body is more than enough to get into the vital organs. But on the Google Images, it's more like six and a half, which is almost a complete penetration through the entire body. And then he quoted that he had a video on his channel of a lady getting hit with birdshot and she just walks it off. I haven't seen that video yet, but the factors that are going to matter is what size shot shell, because all birdshot is not the same. It goes from stuff like the size of a grain of sand, pretty close to a small marble depending on if you're using number, I think it goes as far as nine. I'll roll in the actual sizes right here. Number nine, which that might not be the end, but that's what I remember off the top of my head. So that's what we're going to go with. 
Number nine, all the way up to BBB, triple B, which is quite a quite uh, large projectile. One thing his test did show, though, is it doesn't matter if the shotgun is point blank or if the shotgun is at seven yards, because that's where he tested it, or at least that's what he said. I mean, he didn't confirm, like, right before he shot, okay, we're at seven yards now, but he said we're going to test it at seven yards. I think it did exactly the same, Matt. I think it did. Uh, yeah, about about three to seven inches. Yeah, I've got a good view right here. So you got three to seven inches. So what does that mean? I would like to see anybody argue at all that if you were to decide to use birdshot for mouthwash, it would not take off the top of your head. Which means the shotgun is just as effective at putting the muzzle as it is at seven yards. So birdshot is most definitely lethal out to seven yards. Would I use birdshot? Well, like I said, I don't have a dog in the fight, but I get the application. I would go to buckshot myself, but to say that it's not lethal, it's just a stupid statement to make. It has no bearing in fact whatsoever. You can go to Google Images and know that is not the case at all. It all depends on your choke size, the range you're shooting at, what type of bird shot you're using. But anyway, that's my response to this video. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to check out any of my other videos, click on the links up here. If you'd like to help support the channel, I got my Patreon. I also have affiliate links in the description down below. Even if you don't buy what that link is for, just click it on that link. I got a little kickback for it because you went there off my channel. Don't forget to subscribe.